my own model studies coincide with publication of this ge geological map of the, the world. And this mapping was not available to uh, my predecessors. And it was <coughs> primarily um, uh, mapped, it was undertaken to quantify plate tectonics. But unfortunately, as I'll elaborate, uh, this did not do come anywhere near quantifying plate tectonics. In fact, this information is rarely to never used in plate tectonics anymore. It has provi <coughs> provided uh, a unique tool to um, Earth expansionists my, my, like myself to um, quantify Earth expansion process. The colours shown in this map represent intervals of geological time and as should become immediately apparent the colours in uh, the continents have a different fabric, a different texture to, to the colours in the oceans. Each of these colours, as I said, represents an interval time, an interval where sediments have been deposited, uh, extruded or extruded in volcanism volcanism for instance over a set period of time. It, it, it doesn't discriminate between say granites or, or volcanic rocks or sedimentary rocks, it's just a package of rocks which were formed in that period of time. The continents comprise these uh, very ancient fragments, the granites and um, volcanic rocks shown in pink and red, uh, very ancient sedimentary rocks shown in khaki, um, and, and progressively younger sedimentary and volcanic rocks shown in blues and yellows, I think, in there. Um, <clears throat> this is disti as distinct from the uh, oceanic crust, and as I intimated before, continental crust is quite distinct, is quite different to, to um, the oceanic crust. Continents are around about, say, 30 to 70, 80 kilometres thick on average whereas uh, the oceanic crust is only about 7 to 10 kilometres thick and the oceanic crust is primarily volcanic rocks. <coughs> what you can, what, uh, you can also see, and find the cursor again, is that each of the oceans contain, well the colours are symmetrical about this central mid-ocean rift zone. You may or may not have heard this term mid-ocean rift. Um, I have this in spherical format in the next slide, but um, this can be visualised as a, a network of cracks networking all around Austra uh, um, the world, uh, centrally located in each of the oceans. And this was quite a revelation to the map makers, the oceanographers and geog uh, uh, um, geophysicists when they were mapping this. So what this, uh, you may or may not have seen uh, footage on, on television of the uh, deep sea submersibles going very deep in the oceans and these black smokers coming out and the hot, super hot st steamy water and all the, the mucky metals and whatnot. That's where these, uh, these occur along these mid-ocean rift zones. And you also see that the colours graduate away from that central mid-ocean rift zone. Uh, so the central, we'll focus on this area, this central pink e e colour is present, the, the, the happening, occurring right now uh, to about two million years ago. As we move away, the, the, these volcanic rocks age away from this um, mid-ocean rift zone to these blue, this blue colour which is uh, the early Jurassic, about 165 million years ago. And these are the oldest uh, oceanic crusts in, in each of the oceans. I thought it didn't behave itself there. <laughs> okay, this is the same, same data uh, portrayed on a spherical Earth. It's here. Damn. <laughs> Stephen, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it should rotate then. Oop, wrong one. Oop. I'll talk through this one while Stephen comes. What, <coughs> the Earth is a sphere, as we all know. It's not a flat map. Um, the old flat Earth theory has long since been disproven and, and gone with the gods and whatnot, of course. Um, and this is the same data 
displayed in spherical format. And as I mentioned, um, these volcanic rocks age away from this mid-ocean rift zone towards the continents. Uh, the oldest shown over here is um, uh, the early Jurassic. So what you can visualise here is that this is a crack. It opens up. New volcanic material is injected along the, at these cracks over a period of time, along with um, about, say, 20, 15 to 20 per cent by volume, or by weight rather, of uh, water and volatiles. So uh, all volcanic rocks contain around about 15 to 20 per cent of, uh, of water and volatiles. So here we have a situation where we have new volcanic rocks being uh, injected along these cracks, along the mid-ocean rift zones along with an outpouring of the water and gases. Once it hits the, the water, these volcanic rocks are quenched and solidified. As you open it again, it cracks and further volcanic rocks come in. So this is basically what this, this striping is showing. So over a period of time, um, the pink to yellow is around about 15 million years. So in that time, that is cracked and opened and cracked and opened, new volcanic rocks come through. So you end up with quite a wide, uh, <coughs> wide stripe. Um, as I mentioned, this is symmetrical in each of the oceans, it's symmetrical about the mid-ocean rift zone. But as you, I think you can probably appreciate that in order to do this, you then must increase the area of the oceans and move each of the continents away from each other. And this is the basis of plectonics. The, 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 Arctic, sorry, the Atlantic Ocean in particular is the basis of plate tectonics. Um, I'll, I'll move on to the next slide to run down on that. But All of this material is, in plate tectonic theory, all of this additional material is supposed to, supposedly being uh, subducted um, in the Pacific Ocean. And this is what we're led to believe. Yep, this one works. So what I've done is simply take each of those coloured stripes and remove them and then fit each of the remaining plates back together at a reduced radius. So it'll, it'll go back in time and then come forward in time. Um, so, and this is quite valid because this material was put, was put there, was in place there during this period of time. So all I'm, this is future. So all I'm saying is um, if, you take, if, you, if you move back in time, you have to take that stripe away, each of those coloured stripes away in sequence, and progressively reduce the area of the, the ocean and move the continents closer together. I'm sure you can appreciate that. And this is common to the plate tectonic theory as well as the Earth expansion theory. Now the only difference is, with pl as I mentioned before, plate tectonics, what you uh, add and increase, add to the Atlantic Ocean, for instance, you must dispose of elsewhere in um, Earth expansion is as you expand the radius of the Earth, you open up these cracks, new material is forced into these cracks and solidified and it's simply cumulative with time. So there's no net removal of any material whatsoever. <coughs> 